Our next question is, how did you cope with the stress of when you were applying and when you were in college, and how did your work ethic change from high school senior to college freshman to college senior? So let's tackle the first part um, first, uh, coping with stress during uh, college applications. Um, I didn't cope too well. I was very um, upset with everyone at all times, lots of mood swings. But if I were to go back and do it again, I would say the easiest way is to just break it down into parts. And I even did that, but it was just like I ended up piling most of the parts to the end because I'm a procrastinator. <laughs> Don't procrastinate, guys. Um, but like the minute that the common application opens, just go in and put in your basic information. Like your con- everyone's going to, the like basic stuff where it's what's your name, what's your address, um, your phone number, your email address, like all that basic information that's going through activities that you've been doing in high school, mm-hmm. just get that out of the way so that it's done and you don't even have to think about it anymore and it's do easy enough to do. Yeah. Instead of doing it like all at once, in like four hour segments each night, the night before the deadline or the week before the deadline, go in and like just sort of piecemeal it. Just do different sections like once a week or something like that so that it's easier and it's less stress on you. And then when you're in college, basically the same thing, just break it down. One of the things that I did senior year, which I wish I'd done the rest of college, was at five o'clock on Friday night, I was done. If I didn't finish my homework, it wasn't getting done until Monday morning at seven when I woke up. Um, And just that way I knew like the weekend was my time and it was time for me to do things that I wanted to do. And if I had essays and things like that, I would work on them a little bit during the week. Um, I worked in the math lab and for foundations of mathematics, so no one ever came to me for help. So while I was there, it would just do. I don't think there was ever at the math lab. Uh, exactly, no <laughs> one came. Yeah, I don't know. There that was. Is. We had like a math tutoring lab, yeah, and I, yeah. they, I did really I well. You went the Reading one. Yeah, the Reading Center didn't want me. It's fine. Wow. Uh, the math lab did. Shannon Plain. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. No grudges spared. I'm editing now, so whatever. Your loss. That's right. So, um, it is right right. in. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So I would write while I was supposed to be doing math and whatever. So, like, if you, like, have one of those jobs, like Tyler mentioned That's why no one came to the math lab. She was writing. (laughs) Yeah, I was writing. Every once in a while they come in and be like, calculus? Can you help me with calculus? And I'm like, no. (laughs) I have a question about derivatives. Go to this website and ask She made her own writing center. (laughs) Pretty Mm -hmm. much. Oh, I just finished this math question. Can you help me with my essay? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you have, like, one of those jobs or if you have, like, the desk job, like Tyler was saying, there's, there was always someone posted at the gym. And, like, if it's an off hours when no one comes, like, they're not going to notice if you're doing homework when oh, no, no one's they, they there. Time they tell you. Yeah. 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 Keep busy. Yeah. So keep busy and just find those little pockets of time to, like, do things so that you're not rushing at it so that on like Saturday night you're not out with your friends and thinking I have a huge essay due Monday and I haven't written a word just yeah, space it out there. yeah I've been there for sure Saturday night <laughs> every day uh, yeah <laughs> every day of my life wow. <laughs> even now it's like I have so much work to do I think the going back to well I guess it applies to both in high school and in college when you're Overwhelmed with things, I find lists to be extremely helpful uh, and setting deadlines and goals on those lists to be able to know what's coming up, what's due, what should I focus on, uh, priority lists especially. Of, I know I can bang these projects out, they're all really easy, yep. so I'm just going to tackle those, I'll feel good, and then I can work on the big project. Uh, that always helps, even now into work life. That's something I've carried through, I guess, with starting middle school, but yeah. tackling and bringing it along. Uh, but for the college application process, uh, one of the biggest resources I had was using my guidance counselor in high school. They have had a better idea of what the schedule looks like, what I should be doing, when I should be doing it. Uh, if your guidance counselor doesn't exist or you don't like your guidance counselor, doesn't college. Exist. <laughs> <laughs> Some places not have some are homeschooling students. students. Yeah, Is true. it imaginary? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, the, the, the collegeexpress.com <laughs> has a great resource for all of that material as well. And if you're logged in and signed in, you can save colleges and it will show your application deadline for the college on there as well. So that's also a good way to track it uh, and <coughs> use that in your arsenal of... 
I always find when I was applying to colleges in high school, I was trying to do everything by myself, mm -hmm. and I had no idea what was going on. Um, so it took me a while to realize I can like fall back on my family and my older sibling who had been through it, and my friends who are currently going through it. Um, and I think that kind of goes along with college too. Is you know you go off to college and you're independent for the first time. Um, and for me, that was really hard because I'm so close with my family. Um, so I would call them like three times a week mm -hmm. and that would help with stress, just like talking about my problems with my family and just talking to them, seeing a picture of my dog. Sometimes they tried FaceTiming my dog and he'd run away. It was heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think it made more it stress with FaceTime. It was because the dog was so sad. Yeah, it couldn't, it was, couldn't bear it. I think my dad was eating in the background, so yeah. he's like, I'm going to go hang out with him. <laughs> you did not have food. I have to sign a dog there. <laughs> My dog was also weirdly camera shy. He always knew when we were taking a picture of him and he'd run away. Huh. Huh. You'll find that some people have stress pets or service animals yeah. that are around oh, and be yeah. friends with them. I had a stress bunny and she helped me a lot with stress. Like every once in a while I was like, I just need to hold my bunny and like pet her and everything. And then when I became an RA, um, students would like know that the bunny was there and they like every once in a while I'd have someone come up to the midterms and be like, Hey, Kara, how's it going? And just, like, hang out in my door, and I'd be like, I'm, I'm good, how are you? And they're like, oh, you know, a little stressed, got, you know, good midterms. Is that a bunny? Can I pet the bunny? And I was like, yeah, mm. sure, go ahead. And they were like, so sorry. You were allowed so, to have pets in your dorm? If they were a emotional support emotional animal. Support. animal. I did get I think my neighbor had an emotional um, pet squirrel. <laughs> We had my squirrel. neighbors had a pet squirrel in there. We had a legit so. menagerie wow. my senior year because we had yeah. that's weird. We had it three was bunnies, support, a puppy, two puppies, three bunnies, two puppies, and an emotional support snake, which caused me stress. <laughs> <laughs> Did the lots of stress. <laughs> They're like, I'm getting weird. Yeah. <laughs> it was really weird. Really weird. This guy walking around with a snake. <laughs> you were that guy. She she had a snake around her and went into the cafeteria and someone reported her and she got mad at me and I was like, I didn't know about it, but also, would you bring a snake into the cafeteria? Do they have to wear the little jackets that say like service? Yeah. The, um, the we did have a jacket. Yeah. We had a girl who had a we had a girl who had a service dog and they had to wear it, but otherwise like <laughs> emotional support pets, just like they had to stay in your rooms. So uh, like they're Sock. Yeah, so there's uh, only, sock. I think there only dogs and miniature horses can be, like, classified legally as service pets. Miniature or, horses. Yeah. It's not just a pony. <laughs> no, like Lil' Sebastian. <laughs> what? We're, Lil' Sebastian from Parks and Rec. He was an actual, like, miniature hey. pony. They're, like, slightly bigger than dogs. Give me another reference. Um, <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> I'm out then. Pony. Oh. There you go. So a pony. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Okay. <laughs> but so there might be like um, different qualifications for what counts as a service pet um, well, or an emotional support pet at your school. But like, look at if you do need an emotional support pet, like look into it, see what you need to get. Uh, we needed uh, a doctor's note and a couple of other things, and we had to go. It had to be done before you got on campus and before the animal got to campus. But if you really think that'll help you with stress. Like, if your dog is super helpful and your parents don't mind taking your dog, you taking your dog to college, like, go for it. And as long as you're actually going to take care of the animal, because sometimes people don't, and it's very upsetting. Well, you mentioned, like, actually doing the paperwork and all that. I don't know if you had at Champlain, but they had certain days where they did, like, a puppy thing. Yes. Uh, where they just, like, brought in dogs and cats, and you could just hang out and be in a room. Most popular something, day on campus. Yeah. yeah. You know, something else I did when I was in the math lab. There was no one there, and they were like, "We have puppies downstairs." And I was like, "I'm gonna go pet puppies." <laughs> and it was great. And yeah, especially during finals and midterms, a lot yeah. of colleges will put like in the library or at the tutoring center, they'll bring in a dog or cats or whatever to like have you just sit around and play with them. And yeah, great. we had therapy dogs come to our school, so mm -hmm. they were very good at uh, cuddling with everyone. Mm -hmm. Very friendly dogs. So oh, I feel like were therapy animals. dogs when you're applying. That would be better. When you're applying. When you're applying. Go to your local animal shelter and see if you can mm -hmm. volunteer. volunteer to put, yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's Unless something you have allergies. To put, yeah. There's something to put on your application because you're <laughs> volunteering allergies. with animals. And you get to play Good with point. animals. Good point. So That's there right. you go. It'll help you de-stress and deal with your applications and look great on your resume. It's true. Mm -hmm. Play with more puppies. <laughs> Key yeah. to stress. Too. It's also healthy stress relief to like go out for a run or go, yep. you know, if you're yelling or boxing or doing something to just get yeah. that negative energy out. So that can 
be yeah. in both worlds. And taking time for yourself. I feel like in college, you're surrounded by so many people all the time, especially yeah. when you're a freshman. If you're in like a force triple, there's yeah. no space for Were yourself. You in a force triple? I was in a force triple, Me top too. bunk. Mm. Uh, oh, I had a lot of Yours wasn't yeah. forced, you requested it. Did you request a triple? <laughs> no, no. Uh, so, <laughs> you never heard that. Yeah, uh, that kind of loops in with like the health too. But, um, yeah. Being in a forced triple with the spacing and everything was very Tough. unique. And the two guys knew each other before, and I was the third guy that got put in. And I was just um. like, hey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's always a fun situation to be in. Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's talk about the second part of the question. How did your work ethic change from a high school senior to college freshman to college senior? Good question. Yeah. I feel like mine was a roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. So senior year, I was at a low point in high school uh, where I knew I got into certain colleges. At the start of it, you, you kind of have that, that okay, I got to look good. Yeah. And then as soon as you get that acceptance letter, it's like, all right. So, um, <laughs> kind of relax and, yeah. and coast by. Uh, and then when I got into college, I wanted to make a great impression and show that I can really do all the work and really put my best foot forward. And so then it went up. And <laughs> then when I was getting down to it, so mine's actually a little bit of a unique situation. It's not actually my senior year in college. It's my junior year of college. And then my senior goes back up again because... Uh, my schedule got mixed up completely, and I started taking senior level classes when I was a junior, and then vice versa. Uh, and basically, I was told at the end of my senior year that I wasn't going to graduate on time uh, because I was missing credits. Uh, and so I was able to uh, talk to the head of the IT department and then get into uh, the classes I was supposed to get into. I wasn't charged anything extra because there was a mix up in my schedule and on them. But my junior year was the easiest year of my life, where I only had four classes and I was off on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So that was probably the most laid back I've ever been in my entire life, and still to this point, and it was great. <laughs> so for that lack of uh, yeah. ability and uh, <clears throat> relaxing on the junior year, and then senior year kicked up again because it was like, oh, you're not gonna graduate. So, um, you work hard when you hear those words. <laughs> yeah, and looping back to the procrastination bit too is uh, procrastination is usually a bad thing, but if you can use it and you know you're a procrastinator, uh, sometimes you're going to be working better under stress. Yeah, that's true. And you can definitely see that in the roller coaster <laughs> of uh, my, my yeah. life anyway. I always, uh, well, high, senior year of high school, I think I tried really hard at the end because they kept on scaring us that if we didn't keep up our grades, the school would take away the offer. Mm -hmm. um, so I was always really nervous about keeping up my grades. So senior year, I I, was, I did pretty well. Freshman year, um, I kind of went down a little bit. I tried hard, but I was also, you know, we were taking gen ed classes. Yeah. It's not really interesting to you. Um, so... I think I wasn't interested in the classes, so I went down a little bit. I picked up junior year because I went abroad to London. So um, I took a lot of interesting marketing classes in London. And so I went back up, tried really hard over there. And then senior year, I dipped down again because senioritis, when you're graduating, you know, you've got all the credits yeah. in line. And it's still a little scary at the end because there's, it's like if one thing goes wrong, they're like, you're not going to graduate or you yeah. can walk, but you won't get the diploma. So it is important to keep yeah. everything in line and make sure you have all the paperwork in because there's a lot that goes into graduating yeah. when you're in college. Yeah, for me, similar to Tyler, uh, well, let me preface this by saying my dad has a saying where college is way more fun when you have good grades. And I'll get to that in a second. But <laughs> So in high school, I was, you know, normal... 3.0 student, nothing too fancy, never never took a, an honors class, never really wanted or needed to, or I guess qualified for it. <laughs> uh, but I continued that, and then my freshman year of college at Pitt, uh, I was the only kid from my school to go there, which was really cool, big into sports, great sports school there, and I had always heard at my public school called Westford Academy, for some reason, uh, they would always say we're a college preparatory school. So I always had that mentality that college is probably going to be very similar to what I'm doing in high school right now. So I thought, well, this is how I do it in high school. This is how I'll do it in college too. And my grades reflected that my first semester. And going back to that old saying, college wasn't that fun at that point. <laughs> and uh, 
once I left and got sick, which I guess was kind of a blessing to make up for those grades I was getting, uh, I felt like when I was going to community college, it was a fresh start, not just health-wise, but also education-wise. I had something to prove. So I went to community college, did my first year there, and then ironically got into my first honors course in college. I was moved to that for English or something like that. I don't even remember now. But uh, once I finished at community college, I continued to maintain that high enthusiasm for education, high effort level when I went on to UMass Amherst. And senioritis kicks in a little bit. But you you still have to find that way of making college fun by really doing what you're supposed to be there for, which is classes, grades, everything like that. I don't know if what I just answered made any sense. (laughs) No, it definitely makes sense. I kind of had the opposite experience from John. So I also went to a school. It was so hard. I was writing eight-page essays in seventh grade. It was super annoying. Sheesh, I'm in the same yeah. boat as you. I know exactly and what And it was doing. so difficult. And, like, I almost didn't graduate senior year because I was I was super excited about one topic for a thesis. And my teacher, I wanted to change it. And my teacher was like, no, you can't do that. You don't have time. And then two days before the um, paper was due, this is a 14-page research paper that I could not graduate without. And she's like, you need to change two of your books. You need to get rid of these two. And I'm like, that's where all my research is. Mm. So, like, I worked really hard on fixing that. And I, she gave me a failing grade. And she's like, you have to rewrite this in, within two weeks or you're not graduating. And I worked so hard to, like, flip it around. And I managed to, like, get through. But I was like, after that, I'm like, I don't care about anything else. Like, my, <laughs> my work ethic went from, like, kind of okay to just downhill. And once I finished my AP test, I was like, not do no one talks to me because I'm not doing anything anymore um and I was so worried that college was going to be the exact same and then I went in and my the spring semester of my freshman year we had to write a research paper I'm like nine to ten pages I got this it's no (laughs) issue so I found that college was actually easier for me um because I there was just so much work poured onto me in high school and it was um, like I found my, I wanted to do well in the classes. My work ethic went so much higher. I read the books for each of my classes. Like even my core classes, I was like, I'm going to read I had the such textbooks. Issue with summer reading. I don't yeah. know if you had that issue, but uh, summer uh, reading was, no, it wasn't it much was of an issue. It just wasn't when we did, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was, was the, the issue. best in college when we didn't have to do summer reading. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, more. I got to read books I wanted to read. Yeah. Um, and I mean, one of the great things about Champlain was that we have, they have what's called an upside down curriculum. So we, I was taking gen ed courses, but I was also taking writing courses. I was taking courses that I wanted to take. Um, so I was like, this is really interesting. This stuff is pertinent to me. And I loved being in college. I loved doing the work that I was doing. I loved writing the essays and doing the homework. Um, so it went way up for freshman year. And then senior, it kind of stayed the same because I had a lot of friends in my classes. So like after class, I was taking a web development class. So, like, after class, I would, <laughs> we would go down to my friend's apartment, and we would sit around, have lunch, and we would just do our homework together, and it was done, mm-hmm. so that we were all ready for next week. And I'm like, great, all set. And I was taking a photography class, and I was always late to my second class, because I was like, I'm going to play around with stuff in the dark in the, uh, the dark room, and then I was like, oh, no, I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, especially, I think, during senior year, you're taking, um, more of the classes that you want to take if you have like yeah. extra gen ed credits it's gen eds that you want to take it's things that interest you like web development or um, photography um, and things like that or if it's <clears throat> if you're at a school that doesn't start your major right away it it's a time when you're taking courses that you really want to learn stuff about um, so I think that for me at least my senior year was like my best work, work ethic wise for college not for high school high school was the worst <laughs> I had friends who finished all their credits early, so by the time second semester senior, they could take all the fun yep. classes. And your right offers a scuba diving class. What? So My cousin I took have that. A, yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, guys. I have to go re-enroll. No. In college. <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. It's just a pond. That's, it's just that's a pond. all you get. Knee deep water. <laughs> then bend over, put your just get a little snorkel. It's a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> It's they a put little tank. things in there so you can look at them. It's oh, just so the little plastic little fish. Yeah. <laughs> you go swimming in a fish that's tank. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Really cool. cool. Yeah, scuba diving and sailing. No. Yes. I only oh, know the sailing. Sorry, no, no, you are right. <laughs> yeah. That's More a you know. cool class. Yeah. That's a uh, yeah. I think Karen mentioned at uh, Champlain we had the upside down curriculum. So when. I mentioned uh, Bishop Garden was the school I went to, which is a private school and very much a college prep 
high school, so it was getting hammered every single day on all these different things, and then getting into college, and it felt a lot more lax, mm -hmm. and not only because it was a little bit easier, because you have kids coming from all over yep. that are in different backgrounds, and they're trying to get everybody filed along the same way, but I was able to take courses that I was interested in, too, so it was more of, okay, here's the the building blocks of your education and here's the things that you want to do that interest you and whenever you're in a program that you really like and enjoy uh, it's no longer a task it's yeah. you know that, yeah. that's always the saying is like don't work somewhere that um, yeah. is, is work it's work somewhere is something that you like to do yeah so I don't know why I'm still here but because <laughs> <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> you get to do this <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah that's uh, like obviously love it here and uh, love doing what I do so it's yeah, uh, always fun. That I found like was probably the hardest part of senior year two of co of college is that I just like I wanted to get into work. I mean, I loved. Yeah. I, I got to take a couple of fun classes. I was taking a dance class that I really liked, but I was like, just want to be done. I want to go to work. So that I feel like was one of the things that was like pulling me down. Was that I was like, I just want to get into the adult life. I'm kind of over the class schedule. That's um, how I felt too. But really, it, yeah. for me, it was like I don't know if you know if I want to work. I just wanted money. Yeah, I was yes! so sick of the ramen every other day. Yeah. Yeah. Rice. And I was going to say, not uh, on the money part, but, uh, or technically it ties in, but like internships, I don't yep. know if you guys had any of that. So you get a taste yeah. of what it is, and then it gets stripped back from you. So Especially you when it's an yeah. unpaid internship. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's when you get your taste. But uh, even yeah. then with internships, like it's you get that taste, and you're like, yes, I love doing this. And then it gets taken away, and you're like, no, I want to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, that's a fun part of senior year, too. And yeah. junior year, even, I think I... I did a bunch of internships, and it was, it was all, they were always fun, and I was like, this is what I want to do, let me keep doing it, and, and pay me. 